everybody. Welcome back to Black Magic Craft. I hope that you had a wonderful holiday season. Mine was pretty decent, but I spent a lot of it daydreaming about tropical beaches while being stuck in a lot of snow and a horrible prairie cold snap. Yeah, we're in a rough bit of winter here right now. And I like winter, I really do. I'm a winter person, but it's nice to get away once in a while, break it up. And that's why we usually have like an annual trip to Cuba to give us a week in the sun to get away from all the snow and ice. Once again, for the second year in a row, that trip is almost for sure gonna be canceled. So I tried to make myself feel better by making a little tropical inspired project. It didn't actually do anything to help with the cold winter, but uh, it was fun. I gotta say that working on these little fish people minis did really brighten my mood. Experimenting with fun colors was a nice change of pace for me and something about their grumpy characteristics really resonated with me. Like at the same time, they're very fun and silly, but also so surly looking. I just love it. I imagine them sailing down a jungle river on a wooden raft looking out grimacing in every direction at would-be threats. All right, I hear you. I hear you typing. Why would fish people be riding a raft when they can just swim? This is this is D&D and they got little fish legs. It's really hard to transport stuff down a river while you're swimming. Thankfully, I didn't have to go out in minus 40 to collect twigs that were buried in knee-deep snow. I would gathered a bunch earlier in the summer for future use. I baked them to get rid of any living organisms and they have had plenty of time to dry out, making them really ideal for crafting. A raft is a pretty boring structure, so I needed to find ways to make it more interesting and give it enough character to do the miniatures justice. I grabbed some larger straight sticks, which made me think of doing a pontoon style raft rather than just a floating platform. Because the twigs were so well dried out, it was really easy to scrape away the bark, leaving nice seasoned lumber beneath. Even on the larger sticks, I could cut off the little branch nubs with a tiny saw and an ulfa knife. It was important to me that the raft sat nice and flat on the table so that it looked submerged in the water when put on a battle mat. And I was able to use just an Ulfa knife to point these into kind of spear-like shapes and cut the underside nice and flat. I need to mention that working with all this natural material created a wonderful smell in the workshop that you rarely get in winter, aside from when you're maybe like splitting lumber or having a fire. It did wonders to improve a gloomy mental state. This was especially true when machining out little grooves for the cross bracing to sit in. Seriously, the smell of a rotary bit through dried birch and applewood is just lovely. And now that I've been away from the construction industry for several years, I have a newfound appreciation for the smell of cut lumber that I had in the past sort of become numb to while working as a carpenter for so long. And it's nice to appreciate this smell again. Lately, I've been using this no clamp PVA glue from LePage. It's a lot better for this sort of project than normal PVA or even wood glue as it sets up much faster. You still need to wait a bit. It's not an instant bond like super glue, but it's gonna provide a much stronger bond long-term. I found that super glue for wood to wood joints can be pretty weak. So I try to avoid that on anything that isn't very small. And while waiting for the main structure to set up, I started thinking about how the decking would be done. But I had these bamboo skewers that were a great shape and just the perfect size, they naturally fit. I opted to use a couple of these to create joists so that the decking could actually run left to right. This would give the whole thing a bit more elevation, which was also a bonus. And for the planks, I went with coffee stir sticks. I thought about using some of the uh, thin branches that I had, but I just didn't have enough nice straight ones to make it work. I wanted the platform to be flat so that the minis wouldn't just topple over while standing on it. What I really like about these skewers was that they had these flat fins on the end that in a way looked a bit like fish fins or also boat rudders. I used a cutting disc to cut some simple lines to highlight that fish fin look. It's a simple addition and uh, very rudimentary in style, but it somehow helps the story just a little bit on this raft. It implies that it's not just some makeshift thing thrown together for one use, but a piece that this clan of fish people have put some care and attention into. Or at least that's what I told myself. The only part of this project that wasn't fun was carving all the stir sticks to make them look hand carved. This is such a tedious task, but it's absolutely necessary to make them look decent, but I just hate doing it. Seriously, can't someone like bring to market rustic stir sticks that already look like this? I'd buy a full pallet of them. 
while I grind through this one boring part of the build, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Cobra Mode is weird in the most wonderful and whimsical way. They make miniatures that you can print at home for tabletop gaming, but they're far from your average minis. They're beautifully strange, full of character, and so distinctly theirs. While some model providers strive to bring you hordes of insignificant monsters destined to die, Cobra Mode brings fully fleshed out characters with backstories and lore that you can drop right into your game. Their models all come pre-supported and they put in a significant effort to ensure that those supports are placed really well in a way to preserve detail and make removal easy. And the sculpts themselves are a pleasure to paint. They aren't overloaded with endless, pointless details. Everything on a model is there because it should be, because it helps tell their story. If you want to get a hold of some of these for yourself, I'll put links in the description to where you can find them either via their monthly Patreon service or a la carte on my mini factory. Phew, all right, uh, all the coffee stir sticks are ready. That means it's time to assemble, which is the part of using coffee stir sticks that is actually fun, the part that makes all the tedious prep work worthwhile. When it came time to paint, I had a bit of a decision to make. Usually I'll prime and paint anything I build out of wood and then paint it to look like wood. Now this confuses some people, but there's a lot of reasons to do it. It makes things blend better with other painted terrain and minis. And most importantly, it hides all the ugly stuff like glue stains. A lot of the natural wood looked really good, especially the uh, pontoons. I just wanted to tint them a little bit with inks while preserving a lot of the natural colors. To do this, I applied a clear coat. On the pontoons, I used a satin varnish to make it appear a little bit wet and so that the ink didn't stick as easily to it. The stir sticks and the skewers look too uniform and manufactured, so they would get a lot more tinting. Because of this, I coated them instead with a matte varnish. This would act as a clear primer and give the ink something to bite to. I tried not to overdo the inks. I wanted to preserve as much variety in natural tones as possible. I didn't want this to look like an old decrepit wood, but I also didn't want it to look like it was made of freshly cut green trees. I used a sepia and a raw umber ink to give some richer tones and some depth to the joints and some variation between planks. I even did some fun details like create stained lines where the joists ran. I decided to add a little bit of mossy green to make it look like this raft had spent a fair bit of time in the water. Enough to get it a bit mildewy, but not enough for it to be starting to rot. Overall, I think this turned out great. And this method is something I'll have to consider using more when building with natural wood in the future. I also wanted to try this new moss effect paint that I got. It's from the same place that makes the rust that I love. And this seemed like a great opportunity to try it. Since I wasn't sure how it would look, I tested it out on the bottom of the raft just in case it looked awful, but it didn't. The effect isn't nearly as dramatic as the rust one, but it still makes a better moss texture than simply using thin down paint or inks. It's time to break out the dollar store seashells. These were the perfect addition to dress up this little raft and make it feel more alive. At first I tried to think of sensible ways to place them, maybe to act as some sort of armament, but in the end I just put them all over the place as straight up natural decoration. Maybe they weren't empty shells, but creatures living symbiotically on the edges of the raft. Who knows, but it, it sure looks nice. It looked even better once I ran with this idea of a living raft and applied some moss and colorful flocking. Seriously, how fun is this little boat? 
It's like a floating fish party. I absolutely love it. This is one of those situations where I managed to create some terrain that perfectly complements the character minis. They just look like they belong together. So much so that I'm tempted to take the minis off their bases and turn this into a proper diorama, you know, in some water effects, but I'm not gonna do that. These minis in this raft would be wasted as a diorama. These need to be living characters in a real game. They got some stuff to do. Yeah, I totally love these little guys and this little raft. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section below. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe. I wanna let everyone know that I am in the process of developing my own miniature skirmish game. If you wanna find out more about that, I'll put a link in the description where you can check out the first teaser trailer and sign up for updates. If you wanna support this channel, you can do so by joining the Black Magic Craft Fellowship on Patreon or by shopping on my essential equipment page on Black Magic Craft CA. I'm gonna spend a couple more minutes um, playing in this tropical paradise and then I'm gonna go do some snow blowing.